Well, Taylor Hackford, talking about Devil's Advocate, uh, you're coming off of Dolores Claiborne, Stephen King, which is not necessarily a <laughs> horror film, but it looks like you're pulling out all the stops on Devil's Advocate. Yeah, I, you know, Dolores Claiborne was a character study. It, you know, I mean, Stephen King wrote it, but it, it is, has nothing to do with horror movie. It's yeah. a it's a mother-daughter piece, a very, very interesting psychological drama. Devil's Advocate's another kettle of fish. It is consciously an attempt to give a cautionary tale at the cautionary morality play mm -hmm. in a, in a, at the millennium. You know, we've just finished a thousand years, and we can look back and go, my God, what was there? And now look at the future and say, is there a future? Yeah, or we could say the jury's out to right, carry the, the legal thing. Exactly. And so in this instance, to be able to tell a you know, this is an age-old form, the Faustian tale. You know, it's been done many, many times. How do we give it a contemporary twist? How can we give it something that actually makes it different? One, I think that Al Pacino is a different devil than you've seen before. I mean, he is, I think, the devil for our times. Although, like, like Walter Houston, in All That Money Can Buy, he is, has a certain amiable charm. Oh, I think him. if the devil's not charming, then, he's, uh, then he doesn't, you know, or doesn't earn his salt. Uh, the, the difference is, uh, in this instance, he's charming, he's funny, he's very, very smart. But beyond that, he's serious. And I think that that's the thing that I was trying to do here, is allow you to be charmed, be seduced, be all these things, but also realize that um, he is serious about what he says and that he is, quote, a fan of man because <laughs> if he succeeded beyond his wildest dreams, if he lets man go about his business, he's going to win. Yeah. Look at the 20th century. Exactly. Now, you've also said that lawyers have taken over society lock, stock, and barrel. Well, that's true. I mean, argue with me about this. They control the <laughs> I government. Can't. I mean, the presidency, the legislative branch, the judiciary, it's all lawyers. And in our society, the enforcement of laws have to do with lawyers. So that's all fine. I have nothing against our legal system. In fact, I think it's a great one. However, when in fact that legal system comes down to how much money one has to buy the best representation, everyone deserves representation is our system, that's great. But if you don't have any money, you don't get very good representation. Yeah. And if you've got a lot of money, you get brilliant representation. Like John Milton. Right. Any society that has at its core an institution that canonizes those who free the guilty as to, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's worth criticizing, it's worth looking at. It's, it's to me, ripe for a righteous satire, well, which is what I hope this is. And to locate a diabolical impulse behind it all, is Devil's Advocate a film that had to happen? I mean, does it resonate more now than it could have, say, 10 years ago? I think so. I, I, know, I think that one of the things that I was interested in doing, this was a script that was around for eight years. It was, an, it was a special effects movie. It was a monster of horror movie and so on. That's, I'm not interested in doing that, but I did see at its core something that could be both entertaining, frightening, and interesting, but at the same time say, ooh, look where we are at this change in the millennium. Look at a society, no war, lots of prosperity, lots of gratification. As Milton says, uh, fiber optically interconnected to satisfy every mm -hmm. eager impulse. And look what's happened to justice. Right. And uh, is there justice? Yeah. I, I, th I think that's the question. When, in fact, you get the best justice money can buy, then, in fact, the, we have to question our system. But unfortunately, I don't believe lawyers will ever change that system. We're not going to get tort reform from the people in power because it's all they know. It's the language mm -hmm. they know. And if they are all powerful, why would they possibly change it? Yeah. Quickly, have you been working towards this film even as far back as The Idol Maker? I see parallels. Uh, well, I'm glad. I mean, it's the same filmmaker. I, you know, for me, it's every film is a progress, uh, a progression in what I'm trying to do. I, I try to make a film that's entertaining and at the same time makes a, some sort of statement. Uh, I used to be a reporter. This film has certain messages, but not overtly, not to the point where we're preaching. Hopefully they're there in an entertaining fashion, but it has some substance. Yeah. And I work in an industry that, you know, it's getting rather difficult to kind of get a movie that, one, this has a big budget, which is a big responsibility, two, it has stars, but three, is trying to say something. And I keep trying to do that and at the same time entertain people, yeah. and I hope I can continue, but you never know. Thanks for a big, glossy, scary, and thoughtful movie, The Devil's Advocate. Good to meet you. Thank you. Taylor Hackford, director of The Devil's Advocate. We're here in New York City. I'm John Tibbetts for KCTV5. I was getting signals, sorry. To Great, no, no problem, it's great.